Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. It's that time once again. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to be talking about a TV show from when I was a kid called Buck Rogers in the 25th Century. I had a lot of fun with this show. Star Wars got so popular that they just greenlit a bunch of shows. Uh, I think some of the people who worked on this were also worked on Battlestar Galactica. It was created by Glenn A. Lawson. It starred Gil Gerard and Erin Gray. I think Erin Gray might have been one of my first crushes when I was a kid. She was gorgeous, beautiful. It came out in 1979, and it's like weird because it was a movie. You can go see. It was uh, they took the pilot and had a theatrical um, showing. I think it did pretty good, and then they greenlit the TV show. There's so much fun to have in this show, but the concept is really old. It goes back to like 1928. There were serials and comics, novellas. Um, I guess you can compare it to that Flash Gordon feel when you watch those old serials or the old Batman and Robin. Just uh, crazy stuff I watched when I was a kid. But the show, I loved the ships in this. The premise was pretty wacky. You got your guy who comes from the past. He somehow gets shunted to the future. No one knows about him. He's got great piloting skills, the whole thing. And he's just like this handsome man going around and wooing the galaxy. It was just crazy. And it didn't last long. It had like two seasons, but I loved the ships, the way everything worked. And again, I'll connect it to Battlestar Galactic because lots of people were working on it. There were ships in the show that were made for Battlestar Galactica. Like little things like that, the production and stuff like that. I really love the show i get a kick out of hearing the theme there are lots of tv shows and you hear the theme and it puts you in a little setting like uh bonnie miller um just everything about the show is just part of my childhood looking back i don't think it's uh holds up um i'll watch the old battlestar galactic is the buck rogers shows but you don't get the um feeling like oh this was gold back then but you're a kid you're Oh, Jesus, what am I, eight, nine years old when this is out? And then for however long it ran in reruns, constantly over and over. It had some really cool concepts throughout. At one point, they put this um, uh, guy called Hawk into the show because there were other races and there's like an intergalactic uh, political thing. And they had to you know, go through certain procedures and things like that. But he's the Maverick. He's the uh, Buck Rogers. It's just a lot of fun. They have this little robot. You have to have your little R2-D2. Um, and it was ridiculous. I think they spoofed this for so much, for so long. But you have this little robot. I think it's a guy in a fucking suit, too. You know, like a small person. Whatever they want to be called now. Oh, man. What was his name? Tiki? Uh, uh, beady, beady, beep. Something like that. Fucking... Just craziness. And he had these women running empires like galaxies. They were beautiful, drop dead gorgeous. The show uh, definitely went for that angle with the beautiful women and the, you know, handsome and charming men. And I think part of the theme was this like Empress Chick is in love with him or someone wants his babies or, you know. You know, but he had space exploration and uh fighters and the ships look great i loved the i don't know i guess you call it the signature fighter ship for the whatever the hell they were the rangers um you know you got frozen it's like captain america you know, you're frozen for i don't know 500 years and then it's discovered in like the year 2400 that type of thing it's just something I once in a while will go back on. 
just to get that feel like I would Battlestar Galactica and some other shows when I was a kid. It's that not the quality like I would put on uh, a Starsky and Hutch, which I think still holds up. It has such great themes. And when you got a little space romp fun, uh, you know, I don't think you were looking for uh, critical claim. But, is, you know, there's a James Bond type feel to him. You know, he's going undercover. I'm trying to find the name real quick. Tweaky. That was it, not Tweaky. Tweaky. Oh, my God. Oh, and Mel Blank did the voice. That's funny. Here, yeah, fucking Google, huh? What a great thing. And is the, like I said, the princess is a, I guess they call her a princess. I just, in my brain, it's just like some, she reminded me of some, like, beautiful Klingon warrior, like, she just wanted to take over, you know, galaxies or something. And you never really got too deep into some of these things, but like I said, at one point they brought in um, a guy called Hawk, and he, I remember being popular. Um, I think like a extinct bird people type thing he played and you had the like I said there's a cast of characters that had to do with the political or the um, military machine I guess that there would always be these complications to what he could do in the diplomacy in the galaxy because he's like you know just some schmuck from 1980 whatever you know frozen in space for 500 years and they played off that over and over but I think this is one of those shows like everybody's shirts are open and you know you see the man's hairy chest whenever you can and lots of cleavage and I remember being blown out of my mind as a kid this is just one of those shows um I'm not even sure nah I think I was too young still to start you know playing with myself or something but I guess this would have been one of those shows um, even, well, I guess maybe in reruns. Okay, so yeah. Well, let's just say, yeah. Put it on the rerun list. I just get this, you know, good feeling of um, good times when you were a kid and things are innocent and everything's magic. This is the type of shows you watch. Uh, you go to the store, you buy the Buck Rogers gun, put it in the holster. You go by the figures and the dolls, uh, the ships, and this was um, something they did for almost every. Well, of course, Star Wars just nailed it, right? They just were the biggest thing, the toys. And I really had more of a liking for the Battlestar Galactica Vipers and their ships, and even Buck Rogers rather than Star Wars for some reason. I don't know what it was really. I guess you're just a kid and everything's the same. Um, well, except maybe like the Millennium Falcon has more of a character feel. But the X Wing, the fighters, the E, you know, all those A Wings and Y Wings, whatever the fuck. To me, the Vipers were always the best, and Buck Rogers' ship was just um, a fun thing to watch. Maybe it's because that's more. You know the setting is they're always in them and traveling and I'm not sure this is not something I revisit all the time but I go back to it once in a while when you can find sites that have like old TV shows on it and there was so many guest stars on this show you can just go back to the late 70s and imagine you know all the people you would see that have come through all the other shows I'll probably do a podcast on another show I was fascinated with uh, space 1999 it was a show I never wrapped my head around as a kid and grew into it. I became a huge fan. But this was just, um, just get your attention fun, space, uh, you know, just wacky scenarios and beautiful women, little robots and predicaments. It never had the weight or the feel of like a Star Trek who had a great vision and it just it's a, a promising future for us and 
how they delegate things and handle things and they got their own system i don't think buck rogers is, went into that although like i said they did have like a council he had to deal with and that became prominent in like i think season two but you know he's always doing something that will get in trouble for with his superiors because you know i guess they look at the, the, the problem they have in the galaxy he has someone who could save no one knows about him he can go undercover there's no history tying in i guess you know make it a little bit of a espionage in space and i just get a kick out of it i always have going back um i can remember the lunch boxes uh, anything you can get my hands on and then going back and finding out just like you find out with flash gordon and your batman and robin that adam west wasn't the first iteration it was the one that captured my heart with the pow and the bam and the zoom and this slanted um camera angles i was always robbing to my brother being batman being so tall when we were younger he was like six foot when he was 12 and i was real short at the time uh, he had that huge spurt that he was just tall for so long and um you look back and you go what there were black and whites where batman is in this fabric suit it just looks weird same thing with flash gordon buck rogers had that also so you're going back to the 1928 or whatever when it was inspired and created i just got a lot of um fondness for this uh you know there were things like it's it's not gonna be your doctor who where it has such a legacy star trek it's just it's gonna be that niche in time now could they reimagine it i think they could Look what they did for Battlestar Galactica. You can go back and look at the old Battlestar Galactica, and it's not going to really hold up. There's not going to be no Joe, you know, this is um, silly and it's stupid, and I'm going to be like, oh, no, it's great. This is why. No, it was fun when you're six or seven, you're a kid, and you're going to the store, City of Bargains, and over here, and you're going to buy the latest ships and the guns that they were particular to each character, you know, and back then they were like laser guns, and they didn't have the red tip on them, but. Same thing with Transformers, you know, every, you know, Christmas or birthday, you get a couple of money, you go and you buy the Transformer you want. I the same feeling with this. Just jumping in the backyard with your friends, blasting each other, concept of like cowboys and Indians, I guess. Yet these shows didn't have the depth and the, uh, you know, the real deep issues that would, or maybe didn't recognize them, but looking back, I don't think it holds up. However, I could see it being reimagined. Uh, you got the new Battlestar Galactica, or new now, but 2004. Four seasons might be the best show ever. Definitely one of the best shows in sci-fi ever. I just don't know about the criteria of, hey, look, it's four seasons. They ended it right. But you got s shows that are doing 11 seasons. They're fantastic. You know, how do you compare it? Okay, I get it. It's like, my own impression of why the Rolling Stones would be the best band ever, not the Beatles. Both are incredible. Pop, they had so many hits, but the Rolling Stones kept it together longer, kept it more spread out throughout their career. Now, that might mean you only have the, you know, almost every album in the beginning is great, and then with the Rolling Stones, you get mid and end of their career, and you find that only three or four songs. Like, I, I do that with Kiss. I think these genres of shows, these this group of shows from the 70s were not so much great shows, but just the perfect timing for a kid whose imagination is soaring. I've always been a little introverted and within my own mind. I think it's the foundation of me being a dungeon master and a game master, loving to tell stories and writing. There's just so much in sci-fi that you can envision. You can always envision what's 20 years going to look like from now. What's 100? And uh, your playground is like just unlimited. And it's supported by science and crazy theories and stuff like that. It's not like, oh, you know, let's see what the housewives are going to do today. What's, you know, it's just, it's a really different age. And I don't look back and think, oh, I'm going to look at the acting and the writing on these shows now i might for something like sasuke and hutch even the original star trek and the newer ones they have really good writing 
the themes are really set and deeply explored. This is a fun, I don't know if you want to call it a male chauvinistic show. It's just, you know, it's just fun and lasers and little robots running around. I would tell people to give it a shot to just go back and get some nostalgia if it's something you remember as your childhood, but I get fun watching it every once in a while. I go back now. I don't go back and binge it like I would the old Battlestar Galactica. I watch it, I'll watch it in like chunks like the first four episodes, a pilot. Anyway, I think it's something from my childhood and others my age who really were just fascinated with uh, the popularity of Star Wars. Everybody was taking advantage of it. And it's a perfect timing with blending of um, you know, fun concept of being frozen and thawing out 500 years later. You got all these new, you know, fish out of water, things you can do with him. I would give it a shot, take a look, give it a watch. It's a, it's a definitely a piece of history. I hope everybody's doing well. Stay safe, stay healthy. And my best to you and yours.